Check. All right. Um, okay, so those were the goals of uh, successful data migration. Okay. Um, I think I'm, I'm going to start with the end product so you know what we're trying to get to. Um, and then I'll show you how to get there. Um, so the Migrate module ships with a few sub-modules. One of them is the Migrate UI. Um, so this is a user interface um, for um, showing the clients on the web exactly how far along you are in your data migration um, in terms usually of how much you have built of the data migration, the scripts, um, and what questions you have about the data, about the source data or the destination data. And so you can go to these web pages and talk about them and decide how to handle cer certain pieces of data. Um, and they provide a tool for the client to just see what's going on and feel comfortable at the migrations proceeding, um, which is really helpful. Um, and lastly, you can um, execute the migration using these web pages. All right, so we will, I will show all these things uh, right now. Okay, so. Let's see how this looks over here. Um, there's a big table. Um, the URL I'm at, why don't I actually show this so that you can see, is admin slash content slash migrate. Okay, so this is a URL you get when you enable the migrate UI module. Um, I have additionally enabled the migrate example module, which comes with migrate. You know, migrate for people who don't know, you download from drupal.org slash project slash migrate. Okay, um, you enable migrate example and this is what your dashboard looks like, okay? It has, um, looking at the second column, these are the different migrations that have been set up by the migrate example module, okay? I'll talk about what a migration is in a second. Each row um, is a migration. Um, it tells you the current status of this migration. So idle means the migration is not currently executing. Um, it, it, when you're doing a huge migration, you will actually get to see the, your progress using this tool. Um, there's only three rows in the source data for the beer term migration here. Um, there's three that have been already imported and there are none left to import, okay? The next row is in the opposite situation of there are a total of four and none have been imported, okay? And if I just scroll over, um, some other helpful things are there's a messages column which tells you how many um, error and informational messages have been logged um, against this migration. Those are things you have to go see what's going on and make sure that they're not a problem. Um, the migrate module, when it actually executes a migration, um, and it comes upon a certain node or comment that it can't save for whatever reason, like Drupal rejected it, or we realized that you didn't provide a title and that's not allowed or something like that, um, it will log an error for that record and keep going, okay? So this is how you figure out what records errored out and you can choose to handle it somehow in your migration. Okay, um, we keep track of the throughput of the last execution you made and the date that you last imported this content, okay? So with this information, you can kind of get a feel for how many records are left and what your throughput is and how long it's gonna take, all right? Um, so let's go into the detail of a migration. So if we click this link on beer term, we get a vertical tabs um, sort of thing. Um, I should say that just about everything I'm showing works for Drupal 6 and Drupal 7. Um, migrate is pretty much um, feature parity between the two branches. All right, so if you're going into 6, you should be in good shape. If you're going into 7, you're in good shape. Um, okay, so the beer term migration has some properties that are listed here for um, clients to look at and for the developer to look at with the client. Um, we try to get a product owner, which is the client, and put their name on here, okay, and their email address. And that establishes um, 
who to talk to about issues with this migration, okay? And it's important from a um, consulting methodology point of view to get the client engaged and get them looking at this stuff and working with you so that people are happy with the end product, right? Um, the implementer is the developer, um, in case people need to know. Um, system of record, I'm going to talk about later, so we'll skip it for now. And a description about what this uh, migration does. Um, and here we took something that was called styles in the old system, and those styles are becoming taxonomy terms in the new system. Okay, the Drupal. All right, so let's keep going. If this stuff is boring to you, we're going to get into lots of code soon, okay? Um, okay, so uh, the next tab is called Destination. Um, this gives you detail about um, what you're migrating into for this beer term migration. Um, here, um, the term, it, it is a type taxonomy term, like I said. The vocabulary that you're migrating into is called beer styles. My great example, beer styles. Um, and here are all the destination fields that terms have that you can, you can migrate these things for terms. They have names and descriptions and text formats and weights and parents. Um, you can name the parent by name or by ID. And you can give it a path alias, okay? So this migration that has been set up, you'll actually see that this is red down here. Um, what we're trying to say there is that there has been no path alias set up in the data migration. So that Drupal field is not going to get populated. And that may or may not be a problem. You know, it's just telling you that you haven't done that yet. Okay. On the source side, um, it tells you here is your query that is actually fetching the data. So. I should stop for a, uh, one second and talk about um, all this beer stuff that you see here. Um, the migrate example module has two files in it, beer.inc and wine.inc. And the beer.inc is like a simple set of migrations that you'll want to look at when you're first getting started. Um, it, it is the canonical documentation for migrate module. Um, and so this this, we are looking at the migrations defined by beer.inc here. Um, and so beer.inc, um, this migration is a from a MySQL database into the Drupal MySQL database. Okay. Um, here we see the actual query that gets executed. Okay. And these are the fields that get selected by that query. All right. All right, so more, perhaps more interesting are the mappings. Okay, so we will start to look at how this is done in code, but I think it's useful to see it here that um, for simple columns in the source data, we can simply map them to properties on the term object in Drupal. Okay, so the um, destination term name, that is getting populated with the sources style column in, the, in its MySQL database, all right? The description for the term comes from the details column, and the parent name comes from the style parent. So um, why don't I just get out um, this database browser. It's going to be pretty hard for people to see who are in the back here. Um, I apologize for that. I can't make it any bigger um, on OS X. But uh, if I go to the right tables here, it was like, um, what was it now? Um, migrate example beer topic is the, ta the source data. So here's the source data. There's three records. You can see it has a style column, a details column, a style parent column, a region. It, it has this source data in here, okay? Um, and those are the columns that I'm mapping or that you're seeing the mappings for here, okay? Um, 
moving on, those are the mappings that are complete. They're in the done tab. DNM stands for do not migrate, okay? So these are all of the columns that are not being used in the migration. Um, but we have explicitly declared them in the migration that they're not to be used. So that's why they show up on this tab. Um, in the source data, there's a hoppiness column in the query, yet that hasn't been mapped to anything. Um, so you know, this is a case where I'd want to talk to the client or maybe I have talked to the client, we decided hoppiness isn't going to exist in the Drupal side, so it's marked as do not migrate. Um, and these things are do not migrate on the Drupal side, okay? Here's a mapping that has been or, uh, categorized as a client issue, which means client, you have to look at this stuff and decide how you want it to behave in the new system. Here we have a region column in that MySQL table, and there's no corresponding CCK field or Drupal 7 field where I can put this region information. And so, you know, essentially developers asking for guidance here, like, are we going to do this or not? Um, and we can even have client issues that have a priority. In this case, it's priority medium. And you can put in a ticket number and it will hyperlink here to like the client's ticketing system where perhaps that's where they want to answer questions from you. So um, that's sometimes handy to use. Okay, so this is the detail about a given migration, the beer term migration. We'll go back up to the dashboard here. Um, I want to leave this um, just for a little bit and go back to my presentation. Okay, um, so we talked uh, a little bit about um, the detail of a given migration. Um, one of the key things you specify when you uh, write out a migration class is where do I get my data from? Where's my source? Okay, um, these are the sources that come with migrate module. Okay, so uh, Lots of database platforms you see in the first bullet point there. Um, we've had good success um, pulling data from all of those. Um, the second set has um, sort of a little bit more exotic, exotic um, formats that you can pull from. Um, but we have built in support for these. Um, if your source data isn't in one of these systems or formats, um, there's lots of example code for you to write your own source plugin. Um, there's, in the migrate module, you'll see a subdirectory called plugins. And so you can follow along and look at all of these, um, see what they're doing, and mimic them in your own plugin, OK? Um, one other key component of a data migration is specifying the destination of where this data is going to go. Okay, um, we have um, really common ones like they're going into nodes or users, um, and I've grouped those under entities. Okay, um, Drupal Seven has some um, grouping there, so we call them entities. Um, taxonomy terms is in that class too. Um, within a node or a user profile, you might have fields attached. Um, and so there's really good support for the core fields in Drupal 7 and the uh, CCK fields in Drupal 6. You should have no problem mapping directly from your source data to field data. Um, and uh, we have support for lots of contrib modules too um, so that you can migrate into organic groups and flags and user, user relationships and private messages um, and you know lots of stuff like that. Uh, you will find that um, integration code in the project called Migrate Extras. Okay, it's not in Migrate Proper. If for some reason you need to migrate from your source data into a regular old Drupal table and you don't feel like writing um, a node save type function in order to do so, you can actually do your mapping and just tell um, 
migrate that you're using a table destination and it will save stuff into the table for you. Okay. I don't really recommend that for things that we have built stronger migration for, like nodes and users, but if you have something pretty exotic that we don't have integration for, you can use the um, table destination for that. And once again, if the des destinations that you need are not here, um, you can create plugins for them. Um, migrate module is an object-oriented system. Um, you should be able to like look your way around the classes and, and write your own. Um, M Mike, who's the maintainer of migrate, is you know phenomenal about documenting code and uh, documenting the base classes. So I think that uh, you know if you're worried about it, give it a shot because uh, it might be easier than you think. All right. Okay. Um, we're soon going to get into code, but um, I just wanted to highlight this piece first. Um, so basically, you d you specify your source, you specify your destination for a given migration. Um, and then you do mappings, okay, in your code. And there are simple mappings, like the one I'm showing here. Um, we call the method called add field mapping. And we map the thing called show on the um, Drupal side to the thing called status in the source query. Right, that's, that's all there is to it. And what the default value method means there is that if there's nothing coming in from the source data, then it should default to zero, okay? It can get more complicated than this, but that, that's all we need to know right now. Okay, so let's look at a migration class. All right, um, I think I skipped over one piece that's probably important to cover. Um, in this, that's this notion of there's multiple migrations in your project. Um, a migration in our terms is like a collection of a given s destination and a given source. Um, so you can start off with thinking like each Drupal content type that you're migrating into is a different migration. Okay, um, so you, you will just set up a new class for each of those content types, and you will then say this is a destination node and this is the node type. We'll look at code like that in a minute. And then, you know, it doesn't matter if the source data for those uh, two different migrations is coming from the same table or different tables. You just write the query to fetch only that data um, that belongs in the um, content type you care about and uh, it, it, we found that it's quite helpful to have to split out your migrations and just do your articles and do your authors and do your user profiles and your comments and handle them as separate migrations and so that's the approach that migrate module suggests okay so um, here we have a class called basic example migration, right? It extends the built, the class that migrate module offers called migration, okay? And it doesn't actually do a whole lot. Um, it calls the parent constructor here and it just adds the, the um, team members, like the implementer and the product owner like we saw before. Um, so we can basically skip that. The beer term migration, which is the one we looked at, extends the basic example migration, which extends migration. Okay, so your classes will extend migration either directly or with some class in between. Um, okay, and so, you know, Mike has this nice comment up here about what are the four key components of your migration class. Um, you have to specify a source a destination, a map, and field mappings, okay? Um, so let's see how that gets done. Can people see the code back there? Not really? 
All right, let's try to make it bigger. It looks pretty big to me here. Gigantic. Um, okay. All right, well, let, let's start here. Um, on this line, 83, we have a query variable, and we are going ahead and selecting out of the table that we looked at before, migrate example beer topic. We're picking out the fields that we saw before, and we have an order by statement there, so they come in the right order. Um, I can talk about order later. But um, we have a query, and then the next line is what actually specifies the source for this migration, okay? Um, it's called, um, it, it's the class migrate source SQL, and all you need to do is pass it a query of a dbtng type, and it knows what to do from there, okay? So that's a simple way to specify your source. Your, your source looks very different for like XML migrations. We'll look at those later. But um, this is how uh, a, um, this is exactly how anything from MySQL or, or Postgres would look, because you would probably use the dbtng um, layer to select out of it. All right, your destination is also pretty simple. Um, this destination, and here um, it uses the class destination term, okay, which tells migrate that you want to create terms out of this, and then specifically what vocabulary you want to use when you create terms, okay? So we've done sources, we've done destinations, and now it's up to ma mappings. Um, here we add the field mapping, um, and we do the stuff that we saw on that uh, detail page. Um, the, Drupal, um, the Drupal field name is mapped to style in the legacy data. Um, description, details, same thing. Um, parent name is, is to the style parent. Um, and there's actually a description here, which is helpful for the migrate user interface, can show a description to describe to the client, you know, why you're mapping these two things together. Um, that's not really a code thing, it's more of a documentation thing. You remember that uh, some things were listed as do not migrate DNM. This is how you do that, you just put it in the issue group DNM, okay? Here something is in the issue group client issues and it's been given a priority and it's been given an issue number, okay? So those are kind of advanced things you can do with field mappings, all right? And you know this part of the code is not so much about uh, migrating the data, it's about communicating with the product owners. More things that are DNM. Um, it's helpful to be explicit about what's DNM so that everyone sees it on the sheet, on the UI, and it doesn't show red and um, so forth. Okay, so that, that's a really simple migration. Um, beer term, and um, you know we can do fun things like go run it. Okay, so I just uh, checked the column uh, beer term, and you'll see that um, it already imported its three records. So I'm gonna. Um, I'm going to roll it back and import it straight away. All right. You saw a quick little batch API thing happen. It doesn't take long to save three terms. Um, but it went ahead and did, did that. It rolled back three. Um, it would have done so at a rate of 1,700 a minute um, if we had 1,700. And it processed those three terms, and there were no errors. OK? So. Um, the migrate module does a lot for you. Um, all you really have to do is write these classes that specify your migration, and the migrate module is takes care of fetching the records, processing each record, logging the errors, logging the successes. Um, I will show you what logging the successes really means. Um, you'll hear about the map table and how we do that. Um, and um, and then it moves on to the next record, and then you know soon enough you're done. Okay, so 
uh, you know, naturally um, omitting some frustrating moments, but that's the overall flow of how things go. Um, okay. I want to look at more code. So that was the end of beer term migration, um, beer user migration. Um, is really quite similar, okay? Um, it has a destination of migrate destination user. Um, it has a different select that it does. Um, it also uses migrate source SQL uh, as its source. Um, I guess now I can get into the map. Um, okay, so the map um, is a special table that Migrate maintains, and it takes the primary key of the source data. So every user ID on the old system or every term ID or whatever it was, um, whatever that primary key was, and it maps it to the primary key in Drupal for the corresponding object, okay? So here's where you actually specify that kind of stuff. Um, so AID is, there's a column in this migrate example beer account table called AID, which is short for account ID, okay? That just happens to be what they called it in the old system. So AIDs, and here's like a little schema API array to th that tells us how to save it into Drupal tables, um, is going to be mapped to, um, user IDs in the Drupal system, okay? So if I show you that table, again, apologize for the small, um, migrate map beer user. There's four columns, but generally it's the source ID, the destination ID, and then some more information about whether this mapping actually needs an update and when the mapping was last made. Um, so um, it's actually a really critical, useful thing that Migrate does by keeping track of what legacy ID mapped to what Drupal ID. Um, the number one thing is during development, it tells you what you can roll back. Um, because you might have real data in your Drupal database that you don't want to blow away. Um, there might be real users in there, there might be real other kinds of things, and so we're going to only roll back exactly the stuff that Migrate put in there um, and roll back the number of things that you told us and so forth. So um, it's useful for, for development, it's useful for QA um, to have a record of what the IDs were on both sides so you can go and look at four or five uh, users and make sure they migrated okay, um, and you can find them on the other system. Um, there are some rare cases where you want to preserve your IDs between your old system and your new system if you're doing like mod rewrite rules um, to take old URLs to new URLs and there's some support for that. Um, we got that support into Drupal 7 actually for users and nodes so you can import them with specified IDs um, which is handy. All right, let's keep looking at more code. So there's some convenience functions here. Add simple mappings, status and mail. What we mean by simple mappings are like, it's called status in the old system and it's called status in the new system. So you don't have to tell migrate any more than you need to here. Those are called simple mappings, and these two columns are the name the same in both Drupal and the, in the old system, okay? Um, it can get um, more interesting methods like this dedupe. Um, for you can run into cases where your old legacy system um, let users have the same username, two different users. Presumably they were using email as the login thing and they didn't care if people had the same names. Um, 
And that's not allowed in Drupal. That's, that's expected to be a unique field. So um, it needs to be deduped on its way into Drupal. And we've come into that case enough times that there's now a method where it will basically find a free name by appending one, two, three, four to the username that's coming in and save it that way. Um, um, some other niceties, like uh, we know that uh, the created field in Drupal, um, that's the node created, um, well, not we know. We've written the handler for this field um, to know that it's a date stamp kind of field. And so when you do a mapping here, basically you can make posted. It's okay if it comes in in anything that looks like a date. Um, the handler for created will convert it into a Unix timestamp, which is what Drupal expects it to be. Okay. So some of the, the handlers have done nice work for you so that you don't have to worry about massaging your data before it gets into Drupal. Um, I'm going to tell you what you do if you do need to massage data in just a second. Um, um, here's one worth uh, telling you about. Um, here we're adding a field mapping. Um, to the field uh, field API thing called field migrate example fave beers. Okay, so imagine your content type has a multiple um, choice field called favorite beers, okay? Th um, maybe it's on your user profile or something like that. Um, and there's a column in the legacy data called beers, and um, that column just has a list of different beers separated by pipes, okay? You come across this thing all the time. And so what we're telling uh, Migrate here is that go ahead and separate them on pipes. That's what the separator method means. So they're now an array. And then map that array to field migrate example fave beers. So that's how you can populate a multiple value field, a, a Drupal multiple value field. Okay, um, there are other ways to do it, but that's you know one easy way. That's just one more method on your mapping. Um, okay, so let's see if there's anything else on this that I really wanted to show you. I think that's it for beard on ink. Let's go to wine. Yeah, we haven't come up with spirits. Wine gets pretty complicated. Um, yes, right. Um, okay, so um, here we have the wine user migration, okay? It uses one new feature that we haven't talked about yet, um, which are dependencies. Your list of migrations can't run in any old order. For example, um, you usually need to run user import first because all the content of the website has to be owned by different users, right? And we need user IDs for those people or else uh, we won't properly associate the content with those users, okay? So um, here we're doing um, the user migration, but it even has some things that have to go before it. Uh, the wine prep migration um, the wi wine file copy migration and the wine roll migration. Now, the file copy migration in this example, like, gets their user avatar pictures and puts them into Drupal so that they can be associated with the Drupal user object that we're migrating into here. Um, the wine roll takes all the roles that were in the old system and creates them in Drupal. And so, you know, if you know about the role system, you clearly need your roles set up before you create your users or else you can't put them in the right roles, okay? So that's why user is dependent on those. And you'll see um, lots of other stuff is dependent on user because it's about content. Okay, so um, it sets up a map. It sets up a query, a destination. It's got lots of um, simple field mappings. 
this is kind of what I wanted to show you here. Um, so far, we've only used one method in these migration classes. It's the construct method. But we actually care about more methods than that. Um, here is the prepare method. So prepare runs after it runs on every row in your result set from your fetch, from your source. And it runs before the node save or user save or that stuff um, happens. So um, basically, migrate module has applied all the field mappings. Um, but it hasn't saved yet. So this is a hook where you are allowed to massage the data before it gets saved, okay? Um, which is absolutely critical um, because it's not all gonna be simple mappings. Okay, so this example, um, I wanna look at the second part of this. So here, we're looking at the row and the column called sex, okay? And there's um, cases where that has a value of little m or capital M, okay? And what we need to do is basically make that a value of zero for males in Drupal and a value of one for females in Drupal. All right, so you know whoever set up this CCK field set up males and females as these integer fields, okay? Um, it's quite a reasonable thing to do the way CCK is set up. Um, it just happens to be different from the way the old system was set up. And so you need to be able to, you know, remember we promised to have completely native um, Drupal data in there. And so that's why we better have ones and zeros in our fields when we're done here. So um, we just basically shove in um, the value zero into this long property on the user object, okay? Um, you know, if you guys haven't looked at Drupal 7, this might be a little bit unfamiliar to you, but it's the field name and then the language and then um, the delta and the value and then the actual value. So that, that's how the, the user object works and the, you know, all these objects that have fields attached to them look like that. Um, and here we are massaging the data before it gets saved, all right? Um, you might imagine here that we could add a case. Um, okay, well, he did actually do that. If, um, if it's not M or F, it's some sex that we don't know about yet, then he unsets it because we can't possibly save that into Drupal. It's not an allowed value, um, and, uh, and that will prevent an error, basically. So that's the prepare hook. Um, there's a similar one called prepare row, and that's a chance you get to massage the data right after it comes out of the database, um, but before it gets attached to, before the field mappings have been applied. So you're dealing with column names there, not um, Drupal destination names. Um, usually it doesn't really matter which one you use. Um, there can be some cases where it's helpful to use prepare row because it happens earlier than other stuff can sort of happen automatically because you've massaged the data properly. You can introduce new columns in prepare if you want. Like you can just set um, a certain field, um, field API field to a certain value here. You can set node created, um, you know, whatever you want to do in prepare. There's a similar one called complete that um, is used a lot less frequently. But if you need to do some work after each row gets saved um, to a node, like you need to clean it up a little bit or you need to do some bookkeeping over here, um, you get a chance after every record to run your own code. All right. Um, so yeah, for people who weren't interested in the code part of this, we're getting toward the end of the code part. Um, so I'm going to move down a little bit and show you other kinds of migrations. All right. So um, in Wine.Inc, Inc, we start to get into the XML migrations. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, here we have the Wine Producer XML migration. And it's extending a class that um, Migrate provides called the XML migration. 
and the principles are similar. Um, your source in the case of um, an XML migration, you basically have to tell it the URL to the um, file that holds the XML, all right? And that can be a remote URL or it can be a file in your file system, doesn't matter. Um, and then you also have to tell it each item and what its URL is also. So there's an assumption in this particular form of XML migration that you have one file, which is like a list of IDs, and then you have a file for each detail item. So um, if your IDs are like you know user one dot XML and two XML, you have a file for each one of those. Um, if all you have is one giant XML file with all of your IDs and data in there, there's a migration coming up later that you would extend that handles that sort of thing. Okay, so um, we've told uh, migrate where the um, listing file is and where the detail XML files are. Um, we've told it that we are migrating into nodes and this content type within nodes. Okay, and then we go ahead and do field mappings. Now, field mappings are a little bit more interesting in an XML world. There's three things that we provide. Uh, like before, we give it um, the destination field. So we're doing going into Drupal title field here. And we have something on the source side called names. And here is the X path in the detail where you get the name out. Okay? So um, you know, some of you have worked with XPath, some of you haven't. Um, you're lucky if you haven't, because it's kind of a pain in the neck. Um, but it is the way to query into an XML document and get certain pieces of data out. All right. Um, so that's the general technique with XML migrations. This was um, the case where you have a listing file and detail files. The next migration down is called uh, Wine Producer Multi XML migration. I think multi means that you have many items in the same, many details in the same file. Um, and um, in that case, oh yeah, you, you extend the same XML migration, but your source is a little bit different. Um, you, here's the source. You say you have a source multi items and you pass it items, class, and fields. So what are those two things? Oh, I items, class, you've already defined up here. Yeah, so basically you, have, you give it like a couple X paths and the file where it's supposed to find this stuff. And it will crunch through your file, find all of the items that you wanted to migrate, and then all of the little detail pieces inside of each of those items map them to the Drupal object that you said, in this case, migrate destination node again, and go ahead and save them. So this is a, a pretty sweet infrastructure for doing um, XML migrations. And like I said, those can be um, remote or they can be local. So you can definitely go hit a web service um, that gives you back the XML and you can crunch it with, with migrate module. Um, let's see if there's something else I want to tell you about. Yeah. Um, let me go back to the presentation. Okay. I made mention of the different hooks that you have. Um, here are a few of them, just to recap, prepare row, prepare, and complete. Um, that's where you get a shot at massaging your data um, before it gets saved by user save and node save and all of those commands. Um, and um, this is just a graphic of something I talked about before, um, where um, the data flow starts off uh, with your source. Okay, you query your source, you get um, and you, you then process one record at a time out of that source. Okay, there's a presumption in Migrate that 
um, one record in your source data is going to be one record in your Drupal data, um, or not really one record. It's going to be one object in your Drupal data, like node, user, taxonomy term, file, etc. If your data isn't structured like that in the source, there are ways of coping with it. So if you look inside of wine.inc, it gives you some strategies for coping. Um, but for now, um, this is how we process each record. We pick it out of the source, we apply the field mappings, and we go ahead and save it. Well, we call hooks. You massage it if you want. We save it, um, and then we either map it or we message it. Um, mapping is what happens upon a successful save. Um, we take the ID from the old system and the new system, and we stuff it in the map table. If there were problems, they get logged into the message table. Each migration always has a corresponding map table and message table, and Migrate takes care of creating those on the fly for you as you create new migrations. Um, and um, when you view the uh, web page, the dashboard page, if it finds new migrations, it will go ahead and create um, map and message tables for them and, and go along with showing you that page. Um, OK. So um, you saw me just a little while ago perform a, a rollback and an import of a beer term. So um, we actually never do migrations that way. Um, we always use the drush commands. And I would encourage you guys to use the drush commands instead of using the UI for executing migrations. Um, if you have small ones, it really doesn't matter that much. Um, but if you get large ones, it's a whole lot more efficient and faster to use the drush commands. Um, the batch API is like horribly inefficient. Um, so you would be much better off using drush. So let's take a look at drush and see how you do that. Um, Okay, so uh, what I've done right here is to list the Drush commands that come with the migrate module. Okay, so this is the dash dash filter option, which people probably don't know about, but I do. Um, and so um, here you have like nine commands. Um, you don't have to use all of them, but they have um, usefulness to them. So if we run the migrate status command, migrate status command, which for short is MS, um, you get a version of that dashboard in your Drush terminal. Okay, so you can see what's going on quickly in your migration. Um, here we have imported all the terms, um, and we have not imported beer user. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So I ran the command migrate dash import past the argument beer user, all right? And um, Drush then uh, went ahead and told me um, I have verbose turned on in my Drush, so I see more cruft than you might see when you do this. Um, but uh, here we have, uh, we imported beer user and we actually processed four. Um, Four new ones were created, none were updated, um, zero failed, zero ignored, um, and it took 1.9 seconds, and here's our throughput, and um, I just wanted to um, show off here, Let, you know, if I have time, I'll come back to this, but um, there's uh, XHProf integration in Drush and Devel modules. Um, XHProf is like the tool for doing performance measuring, so if you get into large migrations that start taking a long time and you're, you need them to go faster, um, 
you'll want to use XHProf to figure out why they're slow. And um, you'll probably want to get your devel module set up for XHProf. And when you do, your drush commands actually show you the URL um, where the report is for this drush command you just executed. So if I go to my browser now and I paste that URL, um, I get the XHProf output um, for that drush request. And um, I can see like what Drupal functions were slow during that request. Um, and you know none were slow in this particular request um, because it's small and it's optimized. Here's user save, which you would imagine would take up most of the time. Um, if you do exclusive, you get kind of a better look at what functions were taking time. Actually, yeah, the Drupal 7 password hashing is really pretty slow. Um, so if you're doing a huge user migration, you might want to think about other strategies or faster strategies or deferring that to later. Um, okay, so um, getting back to our Drush. All right, so um, you saw me use the migrate-import command to run a single migration. You know, let's say we're feeling confident now, and we're just going to say run them all. All right, all the beers, all the wines, everything. Here it goes. All right, so it's cruising through all the migrations, processing all the, the things it has to fetch, um, and looks like wine, wine takes a little bit longer than the others. I don't know why. Um, but uh, we'll be done soon, and it will let me know if there were errors, and if there were, I might want to roll those back, fix them, roll them forward, or maybe there are errors that uh, are not a big deal and I can just change my code a little bit and, and be happy with it. Um, so I'll show you some of the other Drush commands besides um, status and import, which we've seen. It's slow. I don't know what it's stuck on. Who cares? Um, okay, so more commands. Um, MFD, migrate fields destination, I'll just show you briefly. It shows you all the destination um, fields that you might want to map to. So this is information that's in migrate UI also. It's a duplicate of that information, um, but putting it in the terminal can be handier for the migration developer. All right, so that's what like migration fields destination, migrate fields destination, migrate fields source is the source equivalent of that. Um, you can just review the mappings for any given migration with this migrate dash mappings drush command. Um, migrate dash rollback can be handy. Um, in the situation that I said before, that you need to make a change, so you roll back your data, um, and you keep going. Um, so if we look at the help for migrate import, which is sort of the real worker of the whole thing, um, you can pass the option limit which limits um, the number of records. So you don't have to do all 100,000 or 1 million at once. You can just do 5 or 10 or whatever you think. Um, and it will do that. Um, you can also limit based on number of seconds, um, which I haven't used, but you can do that. Um, you can tell Migrate to give you feedback every X number of seconds or X every X number of items. And it will tell you how many it imported, how many failed, and what the throughput was. So I tend to set that at like every five seconds, give me input, and you get a nice, you know, comforting, uh, informative response out of Migrate about what it's done for the last five seconds. All right. Um, there are cases where you want to import particular IDs from your source system um, because 
you know they're going to be problematic. Like, you know, records before 1990 didn't have this right data in them, and you need to make sure those work too. So you put in a few of those IDs here. Um, you can pass them as the option ID list. All right. You saw me run dash dash all. That means go ahead and iterate over all the migrations in order. Um, and remember that the order is specified by the dependencies declaration in each migration. So migrate does a sort based on all the dependencies that, it, dependencies that were declared and it makes sure that um, it does the one, you know, the ones that have no dependencies go first and so on. All right. Um, if for some reason you want, want to run the user migration before the role migration happened, um, uh, you will not be allowed to unless you pass dash dash force. Um, so that's why we have a force option on import. Um, so dash dash update. Um, so there are some more cool features about uh, migrate that I need to tell you about. Um, so um, basically what I've described so far is a way to, um, in a one-time shot, um, bring over data from your source system into Drupal. Um, you can get into projects where your source data is changing all the time. It's a live website and you know, nobody's happy with you taking it down for a week while you like fuss with a data migration. Um, so we have developed um, tools so that you can migrate this constantly changing source data. Um, there's two concepts that you need to know about here. One is called high water tracking. So basically, um, you can um, tell, you in your migration you can specify h like how um, migrate should do its query in order to fetch just the records since the last time it ran. Um, and so that's how it gets just new data. Um, and so what you would do is you know, make sure that your source system actually has timestamps there about last modified and last added. Um, and you write your query so that it fetches that information. Um, and there's, there's more detail to high water tracking, but you know, it's pretty well explained in um, the beer.inc and wine.inc. Um, there's an additional, uh, for, like so beer.inc and wine.inc are great for like um, migration class documentation. Um, higher level concepts are pretty well documented at drupal.org slash migrate. Um, so that's one other thing you'll want to bookmark and keep in mind for your migration projects. Um, and go ahead and help us with the documentation there. So the second concept in synchronization is system of record. So you, the system of record by default is the source system, which really means that like, if you, let's say that you have already, you're migrating for a second time the same record, okay? Um, by default, um, Migrate will overwrite whatever node you saved last time that belongs to that record and overwrite it with whatever's coming in. Um, if you say system of record is the destination side, then you can be much more fine-grained about what your migration overwrites. Basically what happens in that case is that um, we will figure out whatever node or user corresponds to the um, source record that we're dealing with, we will node load that or user load that and only overwrite the um, mapped fields. And so basically if you have some source data that's just changing in one column, for example, all the time, um, the price column might be changing, but like other stuff doesn't change or, you know, um, well, whatever. So that's a way of just bringing over the new price every day, okay, into your Drupal system and keeping the source data and the destination data in sync, all right? 
So people can be editing the nodes on the Drupal side, those very same nodes, and making changes that you want to preserve. And it's all okay because we will node load it, we will just change the little bit that we're allowed to change that's been specified in the migration class, and then save it back. Okay, so you can even have like data changing on both sides at the same time in some cases and, and migrate can cope with that situation. Um, so other advanced features of the migrate framework, um, stub entities. So um, you can come across a situation in migrations where you're migrating something like articles and they have a field on them called related articles. And you will like start migrating articles and it will want to relate itself to something that doesn't exist yet. And that's a tough situation to cope with because there's basically no way to avoid it. So the approach that Migrate takes for this um, or that Migrate suggests you to take for this is um, you can declare in your field mapping that if there is no um, corresponding thing to reference, it should go ahead and create it, okay? And that's basically a new method that you put in your migration class called create stub or something like that. Um, it's documented. And um, you basically give it like a plain title, like the title stub and the body stub and a user ID one, and it will go ahead and just save that for you. And it gets, more importantly, it gets a node ID. Okay, so now this thing that you need to reference exists, it has a node ID, and the thing you were trying to create in the first place can now have something to reference. And then when we come across that thing that we stubbed, we will just go ahead and node load it and fill it in with the right information later. I hope you guys can follow that because a little bit of, of a brain teaser, but um, you will appreciate it if you need that. Um, okay, um, there's uh, pretty good file handling um, for all of your um, images and audio and video files and so forth. Um, you can, you know, there's integration with file field and image field. There's immigration with file entities. If you, you know, if your files are really important to your site, then you might want to make entities out of them. And we have come across that and built support for those kinds of entities. Um, and um, there's support for timers. Whoops. Um, so um, if you don't want to do the full xhprof thing, you can just set up um, like start and end timers using some convenience functions in um, Migrate. And then your Drush commands will actually output how much time were taken up by those timers. So you can kind of figure out what parts of your migration are slow. Um, you know, the first killers you'll come across are path auto and token module. Um, you almost always want to disable those. Um, which is a little unfortunate, um, but uh, I'm speaking about Drupal 6 now, really. Um, for every um, item that you save, it wants to like render the body for it, which is a silly thing to do because we're not going to show it to anyone, but the tokens do lots of work that wasn't even asked of them, really. And so that's why that slows down your migration. Um, there's a couple more uh, example modules that you want to take a look at. Um, I showed you um, just one called Migrate Example. There's another one called Migrate Example Oracle. Um, if you're doing an Oracle source, you'll want to take a look at that because it has a few little tricks about it. Um, there's another one called Migrate Example Baseball, which is an example of migrating from a CSV file as a source. Um, it's also an example of something we call dynamic migrations. Um, where one migration class actually can apply to multiple um, migrations in the UI. Um, so it's like parameterized migrations. Um, so you can take a look at that if you find yourself needing like 100 migrations that are all really similar because they only change one small thing. You might be a candidate for dynamic migration. So take a look at the uh, baseball example. Um, I want to encourage people um, to publish your work 
So write blog posts, contribute to Drupal.org if it makes sense, um, about uh, your successes and failures with Migrate. Um, go ahead and show people your code if you can. Like, you know, on the one hand, migrations are very personal because it's your data and no one else quite has the same data in many cases. Um, but the techniques are common, so I think it's helpful to write about the techniques you're using to get your data into Drupal. Um, there are a few cases where um, people have shared what they've done here. Migrating from WordPress to Drupal, there's a nice module that we did that we published, um, WordPress migrate module. Um, typo 3 migrate module exists also. Um, and go ahead and share your custom classes as well. Um, both Mike and I work for Acquia now and are available for hire for migration projects. Um, so feel free to talk to me about that. Talk to our professional services people if you prefer. Um, and sort of that's it for the talk part. So I think I'd love to do Q&A for a little while. You can go to that URL and find the session and rate it. Um, but uh, does anyone have any questions? Sure. Yeah, good, good call. Um, the question is, can the update functionality run using the UI, or is it a Drush-only thing? Um, I think that some of it can be done through the UI. The stuff that is only needs um, declaration inside the migration can be done that way. But I think for the full uh, range of update functionality, you would be better off with the up with the command line. There's that two. There's the dash dash update option and the dash dash needs update option, which you need sometimes, and you can't supply those from the UI. You can't currently supply them. You know, you could also do enhancements like form alter stuff to get them into the UI. Yeah, sure. Sure. So um, I yeah I didn't show a comment destination, but there are a couple examples in Beard on Ink and Wind on Ink of comment destination of comment stuff. So it, you know to migrate it's the same as editorially generated content. Um, you just go ahead and query wherever that data lives in the source side, and on the destination side it's migrate destination comment, and uh, and I think you have to pass the content type that it's commenting on. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. So, good question. So, um, I can show you in the code how we do that sort of thing. Okay. So, um, we are doing um, a select here from the database table migrate example wine comment. And we're taking out these fields. And this is where the order by gets to be important. We're ordering by comment parent ascending, which really means that um, we are getting the comments in the order of oldest to newest. So we can never have a situation where we're trying to mi migrate the reply before the um, source of that reply comes in. So you have to get your SQL right in order to have the stuff be in the right order. And after that, it's a matter of <coughs> field mappings. So here's where the, the relevant field mapping happens. The, um, the property on the, on the comment object is PID. OK, OK, last, uh, last answer is PID, and in the destination, it's the comment parent, all right? Um, so once you set up that relationship, you get your threading. All right, thanks for coming, everyone. <laughs>